Okay. I don't know what that means. We could just get you to state your name and your title just so we have it on record. Yeah, my name is Petty Officer First Class Nathan Gardner. Okay. Um, so, uh, Petty Officer Nathan Gardner, talk, talk to us about what exactly happened. Give us the story. Uh, yesterday, approximately 11.30, we got a call from Sector Mobile Coast Guard uh, informing us that there was a lost kayaker out to sea. Um, at that time, we had an aircraft already spinning ready on deck at that time, so I grabbed my star gear, we went out to the aircraft, we finished some more pre-flight checks and got off the deck, um, I'd say approximately 11.45, and uh, got on scene. We got the approximate uh, whereabouts about two miles south, southeast of um, Phillips Inlet, and uh, we knew he was on an orange kayak and basic demographics of him, on, you know, wearing a yellow t-shirt, the four-year-old white male uh, stranded. So when we got out to, uh, we got on scene, we spotted the kayak drifting out to sea. Um, so we, uh, we maneuvered the aircraft to uh, fly over, make sure that was the guy that we were looking for. Uh, then we, we made a second pass to make sure that there was nothing, there's no obstacles in the water that we, we couldn't deploy a swimmer into. Uh, and then we made, the third pass we made, I jumped into the water and Swam up to the, the uh, individual floating on the kayak and uh, made initial contact, asked him how he was doing, if he was okay. Uh, he seemed fairly decent. Uh, he was very, he was, he was coherent and speaking legibly, so I knew he was physically okay. Uh, and then I asked him what he wanted to do and he said he wanted to go home. So we, uh, I called the aircraft back over. The crew chief, uh, Daniel Brantley, Chief Daniel Brantley, Lowered the rescue strap down to me and I put him in the rescue strap and uh, brought him up into the aircraft and took him back back here to uh, NSWC, the uh, aviation unit helipad here. Uh, and then we got met by EMTs and paramedics were standing by when we got here. Any idea how he ended up in the situation that he did? Um, I could, not exactly, I, I know part of the story that he told me that he, uh, he was just out troll fishing and uh, he either lost track of where he was or he told me that he got hooked into a, a large fish and it kind of took him out a little bit. And then after that, just the sea state and the wind just kept pushing him further and further. Talk to us about his condition again. When you, when you approached him, what was he like? When I approached him, he was, he was laying on top of the kayak. Uh, he looked a little tired, but he looked fine. Like physically, he was, he was, he was fine. Um, when I when he spoke, he, just, he was clear voice, so it was still fun. Was he an experienced kayaker? Do you know that? I do not know that. Um, approximately how long was he out there before you all rescued him? I'm not quite sure. He told me that he was out there for an hour and a half. I don't know if that means that he got out there an hour and a half ago or if he was stranded for an hour and a half. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, Dan might be able to tell you a little bit more. I just know that uh, there was uh, a jet skier on scene that was either had seen him or not seen him. That was part of the, the information that I had gotten. I didn't get the full story. How close to the water can you get on one of those helicopters to where you can actually jump off and uh, we, we deploy our swimmers either at 10 feet and 10 knots, so 10 feet off the water and creeping along at 10, 10 knots, or we do it at 15 feet and zero knots. Is there anything out of the ordinary about this rescue? It's probably pretty standard procedure. Um, being the first rescue here from the aviation unit, I would say it's, that's out of the normal for us, but we do train to it pretty, pretty regularly, so it was at first it was just thought of as a training mission 
and then everyone was just very professional. We all worked very well together. And then it wasn't until, you know, after the entire scenario unwinded and unfolded, it, that's kind of when it sunk in that, hey, we just did this, you know. Uh, Training-wise, the, the one of the I'm one of the two rescue swimmers here, and we have quarterly requirements. But we try to get obviously more than meet the the minimum requirements. But we go to the pool, and uh, obviously we we swim as much as we can, and we work with the gear that we have that uh, helps us in rescuing the survivor or survivors in the water. So we work with that pretty regularly. So is this your first rescue mission? Uh, here, yes. Um, at first you don't really think about it, you kind of just do it, and then afterwards you just feel grateful that you were, you were able to help. How many people were alone on this circuit? I'm sorry? How many other men were alone on this circuit? Excluding the crew, the crew we had, Lieutenant uh, Evan Nock, Lieutenant Blaine Cardinal, and my crew chief, Chief Dan Brantley. Other than them, we had a great team in maintenance control coordinating with Coast Guard and relaying all the information from Coast Guard back to the aircraft. And uh, obviously the Coast Guard and Sector Mobile had, they're the ones that called us, so obviously they had a big play in helping this man. Where's your hometown? California. Um, no, I'm just, I'm just grateful that, you know, we have an asset here in Panama City that's able to respond at a moment's notice to somebody that's stranded. Yeah, I think the unknown was probably the most unconcerning part not knowing what, what could have happened.
Oh, okay. So you're going to look right at me when you're, when you're responding to my questions. Um, how did your Navy training help you? And what did it, how did it play into your performing like your doing this routine? The training helped me mentally. Without the training, we'd have no idea what to do. We'd be out there stranded ourselves. So without the training, without continuing the training and you know maintaining proficiency, it would have been extremely difficult. Did it make it just um, so you were able to just, uh, perform the duties without even thinking about it, or did you have to do something else to kind of fill in like anything out of the norm? No, the training is pretty all-inclusive. All so, I mean, we just, just rely on the training, and it'll get you through it. I mean, there's obviously always the mental aspect of it, but if you just allow your training to just do its job, then everything will run smoothly. I'm going to go through a read-through and you can tell me if I read it too fast or... Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, can you read closer? All right. Well, do you want me to... You want me to look on camera, right? I mean, that's close enough. Okay. Okay. Um, sailors assigned to the... Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center, Panama City Detachment at Naval Support Activity, Panama City, Perform their search. That's what I hate. I hate about reading copy. That's the worst part. Time, okay. Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center, Panama City Detachment at Naval Support Activity, Panama City, perform the first search and rescue of a kayaker in the Gulf of Mexico since becoming qualified to perform search and rescues. But we have to change one thing. Mm-hmm. It was the this division. One. Division. Okay. Okay. Conversational. You're just talking to Ronnie. Okay. Hold on. Sailors assigned to the yeah, picture. I love it Radio. When you're talking to <laughs> boys. That's right. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Ready? All right. Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center, Panama City. Na All right. Relax, dude. Yeah. This Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center, Panama City Division, at Naval Support Activity, Panama City, performed their first search and rescue operation of a kayaker in the Gulf of Mexico since becoming qualified to perform search and rescues. Better. Try it again. All right. Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center, Panama City Division, at Naval Support Activity, Panama City, performed their search. It is. Okay. Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center Division. <laughs> okay, you can tell I haven't done this in a long time. Okay. Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center. Se Sailors assigned to Naval War. This is frustrating. <laughs> All right. Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center. Panama City Division at Naval Support Activity Panama City performed their first search and rescue of a kayaker in the Gulf of Mexico since becoming qualified to perform search and rescues. Strongest one so far. It's getting okay. better. Yeah, All it's right. getting better. Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center Panama City Division at Naval Support Activity Panama City performed their first search and rescue of a kayaker in the Gulf of Mexico since becoming qualified to perform so search and rescues. Getting better. Right. Sailors assigned to Naval Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center, Panama City Division, at Panama. <laughs> okay. Sailors assigned to Naval Surface Warfare Center, Panama City Division, at Naval Support Activity, Panama City, performed their first search and rescue of a kayaker in the Gulf of Mexico since becoming qualified to do search and rescues. Close, but let me have that mic. Mm -hmm. I have an idea. What if we simplify it and just say, because of the 
because it's going to come out later in the story that it's NSWC, right? Mm -hmm. Search and rescue sailors on board naval support activity Panama City. Okay. I mean, you know, I want to get the NS, the Warfare Center in there. I do, but for an intro. Yeah. Is, okay. Is that Keep it easier? Simple. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sailors on board, naval support activity, Panama City, search performed and, their first search and rescue operation since becoming qualified or something. Or better yet, search and rescue sailors at naval support or surface warfare. No, that's naval support activity. But they're not. You're right. Search and rescue, it's the detail. Search and rescue sailors in Panama City. Panama City search and rescue sailors? Yep. Panama City, Florida search and rescue sailors? Rescued a distressed kayaker? What day is today? Thursday. Better? Uh, yeah. Not such a mouthful. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Can you read my chicken scratches? Uh, I think so. All right. All right. Panama City, Florida search and rescue sailors rescued a distressed kayaker the morning of Thursday, October 23rd. This was the first rescue since be earning their SAR certification in 2011. Definitely easier to, to flow out. Yeah, let's try it again. You had one little stumble. Okay. Don't forget to look at Ronnie. Okay. Panama City search and rescue sailors rescued a distressed kayaker the morning of Thursday, October 23rd. This was the first rescue since... Be okay. Panama City, Florida search and rescue sailors rescued a distressed kayaker the morning of Thursday, October 23rd. This was the first rescue since earning their SAR certification in 2011. Um, and so then we also get have to... Ready? Yeah. For all hands update, I am Petty Officer Kevin Gray. For all hands update, I am Petty Officer Kevin Gray.